Welcome to the floor of NBAA 2008. I'm Paul Plack here with Don Barber, who is the executive director of marketing for Bell Augusta Aerospace, and we're here to talk about the BA 609 tilt rotor, which, Don, if I understand correctly, is pretty much a civilian offshoot of the V22 Osprey. Uh, that's a, a good quick summary. It's it, they're both tilt rotors. After that, uh, there's quite a bit of difference. This is the next generation tilt rotor. It's focused specifically on transport category requirements for the civilian market. One of the things that would not have been around five years ago was an extremely happy U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, they have taken this technology into deployment now, and from all reports we get back, they love it and they want more of it. Is that helping you at all on the civilian side? I, I think absolutely yes. Uh, the the image and confidence of the tilt rotor technology being fielded and reported on around the world um, uh, is a very good thing, and it certainly strengthens the uh, confidence of everyone for all of the uh, tilt rotor technology applications, whether it be UAVs or, or civilian commercial aircraft like we have in the 609 or additional V-22s or additional future aircraft of uh, tilt rotor technology application. Uh, so that does benefit for sure. The key differences between us and the, uh, and the government version are of course the pressurized cabin um, and then the, uh, the ability to fly uh, as we are here into the size areas that we are able to go. We're really one-third the size of, a, of the uh, government B-22s. So it's it's much smaller vehicle. Um, we're only around 16,000 pounds. They deploy frequently more than 50,000 pounds. So we have a substantial difference in the size. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. A lot of times when a hybrid aircraft like this is developed, the criticism usually comes down that it's not a very good A and it's also not a very good B. How good a vertical lift capability aircraft is it and how good an airplane is it? Oh, that, those are great questions and they were market drivers for us. We, we, we heard those from our customers before we settled on the design drivers for this vehicle. And so we had to answer those by, by saying it must be a suitable vertical lift aircraft. We think we've got a pretty competitive fixed wing performance as well as a very competitive uh, vertical lift performance uh, and it's due to the power install that we have. Uh, the power to weight ratio here is higher than anything else in the commercial uh, uh, vertical lift class and uh, is provided to us from the uh, Pratt & Whitney PT-667. Very happy with that uh, engine and the uh, rotor performance. Uh, very well defined and we've hit all the envelope now up to 25,000 feet and uh, more than 300 knots has been demonstrated and um, the aircraft is uh, going to be able to do pretty good competitive helicopter, pretty good competitive fixed wing, and yes, we did answer that. All right, when you throw the word competitive into the mix here, we have to talk about the economics of the aircraft. Yeah. Who is the customer for this aircraft, and how does it pencil out compared to owning, for example, a very nice helicopter? Okay. Um, the customers are a mix. There's, uh, there's the corporate folks, of course, that, that would use the aircraft privately uh, as individuals or companies. And then there's the fly-for-hire guys who would actually rent out the aircraft or charter it. And then there's other missions particularly suited to uh, governments for the public good of search and rescue and, and things like that that would be for civil government interests. So we find orders, our order book has got uh, all of those covered. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. Since the time that a lot of those orders were taken, there has been a substantial change in the estimated to market price of this aircraft. How much of that order book do you think will hang in there and, and what do you see for prospects beyond what you have on the books now? What we're looking at is uh, a, a value proposition that if you compare to alternatives uh, of either a mixed fleet of aircraft, of helicopters and airplanes, uh, compared to the uh, uh, total ownership costs for this one vehicle, um, we're very competitive. In fact, we'll be less than, than many of those combinations. Uh, and then we provide you the time efficiency of not 
uh, having to change vehicles and not having to have support crews or insurance or maintenance tails for a variety of aircraft. And basic, we have one hangar that you can fit this one in wherever you can fit mini fixed wing. So we think it's a very good consolidation opportunity economically uh, as well as uh, for time on a mission by mission basis. We would expect a large number to uh, retain. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. Let's talk about the pilots who will fly this aircraft. Where will they come from? Where will they be recruited from? How will they be trained? And, and what kind of infrastructure is set up for that now? We have a uh, uh, discussion underway, of course, with the uh, uh, authorities for, for training pilots and certifying pilots. Uh, since it is a new category, um, it's a powered lift category with a tilt rotor type, um, we're, we're really thinking the, the initial pilots would come uh, from the from the open market, presenting themselves with a a uh, uh, fixed wing rating, a rotorcraft rating, and an instrument rating. It brings us those three, and they would begin the transition school of both ground school and simulator flying, and then flying the actual aircraft. Uh, that would take them to a, a qualified status as a tilt rotor pilot. So it'd be an additional rating that they would achieve on their pilot certificate. And it's very easy to hover, and so we're, we're, we're hearing back from those who've flown the simulator that you see here that it's, it's easier to fly than they expected. So without a tail rotor, it doesn't, doesn't have a tail rotor, uh, it's just a, a very simple aircraft to fly. It's very intuitive. Uh, the fly-by-wire allows us to do uh, wonderfully appropriate things in the cockpit that benefit the pilot. It's just intuitive in every mode of flight. and so. Um, it's, it, it is going to be a, a good transition for folks, but it is a new transition. So we will, we will carefully take those aircraft we have on backlog, and, and there's two pilots to be trained for each of those. So we're looking forward to that, and we have a school in the, in the uh, simulation uh, in our plans that will be uh, certifying new pilots and adding that certificate rating to them for, for flying the, the 609 tilt rotor. Now, Bell Augusta Aerospace was set up as a company specifically for this aircraft. Is there anything more coming out of this collaboration? Uh, one thing at a time. We will uh, do this uh, and do it well. And as it's fielded and confidence builds and the support systems are there, um, who knows? I think it's possible you'll see others, uh, family of vehicles over, over the many years to come.